Hello YouTubers, this is Desiree coming to you from my channel here for you. We're in 2012. Happy New Year. Let me start off by giving this disclosure with this video. This video is just my opinion, my experiences, and it's not meant to offend or upset anyone. This is just basically my opinions and my experiences. So I just wanted to get that out up front. All right. So with that being said, let me share some things with you. I wanted to talk about the difference between a stylist and a hair care professional. Is there a difference? And let's talk about why I think there's a difference. Again, my opinion, my experiences. Okay, so I was out last week looking for some things for my granddaughter's hair because her hair, she's only 14 months, tends to be very dry. She has um, C3 hair at this point. So she has a coarser texture, but it's corkscrew. No, I take that back. I'm sorry. She has three. <laughs> she has type three B hair. Okay, so she has the corkscrew like curls. And it's baby hair, first of all. So she has three B hair. Well, it seems to be really dry at times. I've done natural things as far as the yogurt mask with olive oil mixed in it, and I've done mayonnaise, honey, and egg yolk, a mixture, and I did a mask on her with that. Well, again, I was out and I ran it. I was at JC Penney's, went into a salon, went into their salon to buy, purchase some cheap for me. And me and a stylist got, you know, started talking. And I was asking her, did she have any suggestions for things that would moisturize my granddaughter's hair? She said, oh yeah, I know what would work wonders for her hair. And I was like, okay, what works? She said, baby oil. I was like, wait, baby oil? She said, yeah, baby oil. She said it with confidence. And I was like, okay. And in the back of my head, I was thinking, I'm not putting that in my granddaughter's hair. Now, as a stylist would tell me that, a hair care professional would not tell me to put petroleum and mineral oil in my granddaughter's hair. Yes, she's going to have a shine. But at the end of the day, her hair is not going to absorb any moisture. And it's going to be drier because that's going to block any moisture that she could absorb. So, do you see where I'm going with this? Let's continue. Oh, by the way, I did find um, some products for her. Uh, mixed Chicks. It's for children. Kids. This is leave-in conditioner. And this is working for her. And I also bought the Kids Tangle Tamer. Mixed Chicks with spray. Comes in a spray. So, the um, leave-in conditioner is on the pump, and then this is the spray. But that's been working, because I've tried um, Carol's Daughter and Shea Moisturizer. So the mixed chick so far, I like the best for her hair. Anyway, continuing on. Something to think about. A stylist will tell you, you need to cut your hair every six weeks. It is very important for you to cut your hair every six weeks. When you come in for a relaxer, you need to cut your hair. Let's think about this. Let's state the fact. Your hair grows half an inch to an inch. And if you're really blessed and lucky, you can grow an inch and a half of hair a month. If I go to a stylist every six weeks, sit down in your chair, and if you're scissor happy, you're going to cut an inch to an inch and a half of my hair off. If my goal is to grow my hair, you're not going to help. I want to maintain and obtain length. If you're cutting my hair every six weeks, it's so wonder my hair has been the same length for two years. Just saying. You see where I'm going with this? Now, a hair care professional would tell me, you don't need your hair cut this time. Um, do you really want to relax this time? Why don't you wait until next time? Because they kind of know that it's not necessary to get a relaxer every six weeks. And I think that's why the misconception is relaxed hair is not healthy hair. The reason being is if you relax your hair every six weeks, you run the risk of overprocessing your hair. Because let's face the fact, when you relax your hair, you only want to relax the new growth. You don't want 
the relaxer down to your already relaxed end. Now, I didn't know that, and my stylist didn't tell me that. I had a stylist that would relax my new growth all the way down to my ends. Oh, we're going to make it bone spray all the way down. Okay. I, I'm, okay. You know, you know what you're doing? No, she didn't. Which would aid in my hair breaking and me cutting my hair back off. Because I was notorious for cutting my hair every other year. Matter of fact, 2012 would be the year that I would cut my hair. I would let it grow all 2011, 2012, mid-2012, I would be cutting it back off because it took me that long to damage it again. So I'm going to have to upload some pictures to show how many times I've had different cuts because I don't like to walk around with my hair looking choppy. Now, a stylist will tell you every six weeks you need your hair cut. Let me show you something. My hair has been growing out since February of 2011. I had this part back here tapered. Let me tell you how many times I had my hair cut. Let me show you the back of it first. Let me show you how many times I had my hair cut. This is the back of my hair. That. This is the back. And it, it, it was tapered back there, so it's growing out in some weird layers. But it's okay, because it's consistent. So it's, it's okay. And, you know, this is the side. You can see this is the side. And this is this side. Let me tell you how many times I had my hair cut last year. None. Not one time. But let me tell you some things that I did do. What I did was I went through my hair. Let me use this side. And I pulled my hair out like this. Uh, like this. And what I did was, and let me change the viewing on this. Okay. So what I did was. I went to my very ends of my hair like this and if there were any ends there was any hair that was out I would cut them off and basically that dusting I went and dusted my ends so my hair could grow back because remember I said this was tapered so so my ends could all be even I would make sure I dust my ends look at this I just dusted it today also so let's see if can see my ends now, when I was going to a stylist, my hair would be thick. They would always tell me I had thick hair. Well, you have thick hair, but when it got midway, it wasn't as thick. I knew it was thick up here, but here it wasn't. I haven't been to a stylist last year at all. Look at this. My hair is thick and consistent all the way down. All the way down. My hair is thick and consistent. And that's because I've educated myself on what my hair needs. So I think that's an important factor when you decide whether you want to go natural or relaxed. A misconception, I think the misconception that relaxed hair is not healthy is because if you get your hair relaxed every six weeks, of course you're running the risk of damaging your hair. Just That's just the truth. I didn't know about stretching. Last year, I relaxed my hair twice. That would have been unheard of before YouTube. I'm telling you, I appreciate the ladies of YouTube sharing their journeys, their trials, their errors, their setbacks, so I would know which direction to go and which direction not to go. I, if you look at my videos, I wear a lot of wigs, but I, I don't wear my wigs more than a month, month and a half at the most. Lately, since I've been on my hair care journey, I'll be honest with y'all, I don't even know why I put them in my hair, because I wear them four weeks, which is a month, and then I'll take them off. Some of them lasted three weeks. And that's, that's just not long enough to sit and let my daughter sew in here. So we decided um, we're going to go on this journey and do it all natural. We're gonna, what we're going to do is do clips though. So we're gonna, that's going to be another video. But in any case, back to the topic at hand, stylists versus hair care professionals. I enjoy having the luxury to go into a salon if I want to. If I want to, not because I need to. Whatever path you choose, educate yourself. Understand what your hair needs. When you choose a stylist versus a hair care professional, understand, I believe a stylist is going to fry, dye, and lay your hair to the side and it's going to look good, but at the end of the day, is it going to be healthy? That's what you want, healthy hair. I did not know to co-wash. I didn't know anything about dusting. Oh, and I certainly didn't know about this. This is the split ender. I used this once. 
last year. And this is how, I was going to use it again, but this is how I determined whether I needed it or not. I took my hair out, twisted it, well, it's not straight, but twisted it and watched for any ends that were sticking up. And as you can see, I'm good. So I used that once last year. So I guess, is it really true that I need my hair cut every six weeks? I think not. What you think? All I'm saying is, educate yourself on whatever direction you choose to go. I don't want to get into the old debate. Straight, um, relaxed hair is not as healthy as natural hair. Natural hair is just a different type of hair that you have to take care of. It needs more moisture. You have to be careful with it because it will break. You have to understand it. I attempted to go natural. It didn't work for me. I attempted four years ago. I stretched 10 months. My hair was breaking like crazy. I was combing my hair. I had hair everywhere. I did not know natural hair needed so much moisture to it. I didn't know coconut oil was excellent for natural hair. That olive oil is excellent for natural hair. I did not know this. So what I wound up was unprocessed hair that was dry. Didn't work for me, so I processed it back. So what I'm saying is understand your hair, your journey, your direction. Educate yourself and go your way. Have the choice and not be forced to go sit in the salon till next time. <laughs>